Oh, boy, boy, boy. Howdy, folks. Bad news. I ate chili for lunch. Um, so I'm probably going to shit myself later. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> it was chili and tuna. Bad idea for a lunch combo. Um, anyway, uh, first up, uh, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. This one actually didn't have any, like, sticking stuff to it, which is great. Like, it's bizarre to me that of all of them that The Last Crusade did, like, what the fuck was that all about? All the rest of these have just slid right off without a bloody, you know, pickle and a half. So, yeah, you got your nice glossy cover. I say glossy because it's kind of got, like, that specific shine on the golden parts, like his bike and the skull and her sword and whatnot. Uh, you got the skull on the back, which is pretty freaking nice. You get them on the inside, which is a pretty decent image. I mean, obviously, it extends all the way around with Marion on the other side. And you get your poster, which is still pretty nice. This is like, I think, the teaser poster, I think, like without all the cast, which I think they've all been teaser posters for the most part. That's like being like the whole ordeal of all these posters, you know, like the man with the hat returns, this time with his father, you know, that kind of bullshit. So yeah, no, I'll be honest, for the most part, I'm really happy to have all these steelbooks, to have them all in uniform, to have them all looking the way that they do. They just look exceptional. I know people don't give half a fucking shit for Kingdom of Crystal Skull. I've always liked it. Yes, there are issues with it, sure. Like the monkey scene, which is fun, but stupid. And look, I'll be honest, I've always loved the nuclear bomb part, especially when he just survives the goddamn fridge. I'm like, fuck, this guy can do anything. <laughs> you know, It's dumb, but it's fun. So I, I enjoy it for that, you know? I, I am... Somewhat still excited for the new one. That'll be, I don't know, it could be interesting. I bought a couple things on, so the Queen died. I don't know if you've noticed, uh, by the time this video comes out, it'll be October, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, I probably should, I do wonder, is this coming out on my birthday or not? Alright, so I've just realised that this video, because all these videos this, this weekend, come out on Mondays. Mondays, just always, because it's the start of the week, why not, it's easier. Um, this video is rostered to come out on the 24th of October, which might be today, it might be later in the week. I don't know yet how I'm going to pin it out, because the 24th is my birthday. I'm turning 24, it's great. Um, so, either this video is coming out on my birthday, uh, just for the traditional sake of having the This Weekend come out on the Monday, or I might delay it till the Tuesday or some bullshit. I don't know, but if it's my birthday today, then that's my birthday. It might say 23rd because, like, on the description, because it's the US date that it usually refers by, but still. So that's why, like, most of the videos that come out on my birthday I always say the 23rd instead, because it goes by the US counterpoint instead, even though it's, like, that 12 a.m. on the Monday morning. <laughs> it's not, like, 12.01, but, you know, it's still... The Monday morning. Uh, anyway, so there you go. I just realized. I bought robots. Uh, I mentioned that the Queen was dying uh, and that she died and all that shit. I'm only mentioning it because we had a, you know, Victoria had the. Did all of Australia do it? I'll be honest, I don't know. I don't care. Victoria at least had their day of memoration or whatever the fuck it was. I don't know. I got a day off work. I still worked the next day, which was a public holiday in Victoria because it was like the grand final pre-grand final day, so I worked that day, so I got double pay. Great. Or pay and a half. Who cares? Fucking easy day. But I ordered some Blu-rays on that day, uh, to come in on that day, on that Thursday, because Amazon, they're a bunch of bastards. Anyway, I got a childhood favorite, Robots, because I don't need it. I've bought, I've had two DVDs of this in my life. Uh, the first DVD I had, I think we threw out when I, when we moved to where we currently are. And I was looking for it to watch it because I had some nostalgia for it. It didn't have it. So I bought the DVD like a fucking idiot at JB Hi-Fi. It was probably like five bucks. And I have the DVD down there and I have watched that DVD since. But yeah, I figured I'd just buy the Blu-ray because I really like this film. It's it's not the best film in the world, but it's a, it's a, it's a childhood favorite. And um, I don't know, it's just, it's just good shit. So that's one. Numero dos, The Contender. This one allowed me to uh, get the free shipping to come in on the same day kind of deal. 
Uh, this is one of the imprint titles. Uh, I have never seen it, but it is. It sounds like an interesting film. It has quite an abundance of special features as well. It's a political thriller set in like the. I think it came out in the 90s. It's meant to be very. Okay, it came out in 2000. It's meant to be a whole like Bill and Hillary Clinton crap, you know, with their whole. Oh, America. I don't know that much about that American politics, I'll be honest, you know. I I grew up with Clinton being the the memed guy who slept with his secretary and I never once considered a secretary or whoever it was. And like I never considered how because I only learned after the well after the fact that people villainized the secretary because he made them villainize the secretary where it's like, yeah, but he was a bad guy, so it's like, I don't know. So that's interesting. I don't know how much it has to do with like the politics of the time, but it's enough that it's like a reflection kind of deal. And then to make my Halloween season just that extra bit spicier, I bought myself The Frighteners, which I haven't actually seen, so I haven't seen The Contender either. Uh, this is the 15th anniversary edition, has a hot damn amount of special features there, and of course it is a Peter Jackson film uh, starring Michael J. Fox. I've known about this film for a long time. I love to how it's like, oh, yeah, that, that Blu-ray cover that's like, you know, UK as well as uh, Australian and whatever. I like the cover. It looks interesting. It It's kind of creepy. Obviously, the big M-rated logo is kind of bullshit. But, uh, yeah, it's got, a, it's got a documentary about the film. So, full-length documentary. I think that's like the whole special feature, just the documentary. So, yeah, I don't know. I've always wanted to check it out. I've seen images and I think clips maybe before in the past but I've never actually watched it so I figured hey sure it was like seven bucks why not and because this is still a absolute banger of a film despite its original being my favorite vampire film of all time I bought Fright Night on Blu-ray I have done a video about Fright Night it was not a good video I'm pretty sure it was just me comparing the two which really wasn't it's not worth watching but yeah I figured I'd buy the Blu-ray because you know, it's a good horror film, deserves good picture, good sound kind of deal. The whole cast is fantastic. You've got Anton Yelchin, he's brilliant. Fucking David Tennant, Colin Farrell, Tony Collette. Um, I don't know who the girlfriend's character, I don't know what her name is. It uh, doesn't say. No, it doesn't. I mean, if I looked at the specifics, Colin Farrell, Fright Night, Christopher, Mintz, Plus, David Tennant, and Tony Collette. Well, unless her name's Christopher, okay, I guess she's not credited. <laughs> it's kind of weird. But, uh, yeah, I adore this film. This is what I watched before, watching the original Fright Night, because we love David Tennant because of Doctor Who. So we watched that when it... Well, we didn't watch it when it came out, obviously. It was MA, so we got the DVD, which we still have. Uh, I just wanted to upgrade it. Also, I wanted to own the DA version, because it's not actually mine. The DVD is like... I guess Dad bought it for us or some shit, because, hey, vampires. And also David Tennant, hey. But yeah, I've always found them to be really fun movies. I haven't seen either sequel to both films, which I find so not very bizarre, I guess, when you think about it. Like, most people would watch a remake over a sequel half the time when it comes to a lot of stuff like that, like direct-to-DVD sequels and stuff. I've realised I'm pretty sure my camera's been crooked the whole time. I have no idea. Anyway, um, that's all I've gotten so far. I'm expecting a few more things in the mail, so I'll just kind of jump to that, and we'll uh, I'll see you in those clips where I'm going to walk out and then walk back in. And when I walk back in, something will happen. I don't know what. I'm just saying something might happen. Who cares? Let's get on with it. I said I'd walk back in this way. It's funny. It's spooky season. I'm not even wearing any spooky shirts yet. Ha 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 ha, I'm wearing my, uh, uh, I would steal a television, I would steal a car. You can't see the base of it because it's, um, wide framed. I, there's no point, you, you get, the, you get the picture. Anyway, uh, I did actually get more stuff in just after filming that previous clip. <laughs> it was funny, I went and had a shower, checked my emails and it's like, you've, package, arrived, here you go. And I'm like, oh shit, alright, so I just went out there in my underpants and, and, my brother had just arrived, so I was like, can you grab that box while you're on your way in? So, uh, I'm not going to show my address. Got a box, um, really nicely padded as well, which I always like to, uh, address. In this case, padding like such. Um, 
nicely done. Each film was individually like laid into it, like a serpentine in a way. So I got these three films from Chameleon Films, the new Australian boutique label, I guess. Uh, I plan to do an anatomy of a Blu-ray on maybe all three of these. I don't know yet because there's a lot of extra stuff on these, which if you know my series Anatomy of a Blu-ray, I like to deal, go into every like element of the Blu-ray as much as I can get around to. And uh, for the most part, these are, it's, I don't like to do like criterions and stuff because I endeavor not to, mostly because there's so much stuff on them. Um, and I know that a lot of websites like Blu-ray.com has done reviews and stuff, so realistically I don't need to make those videos, but it gives me a reason to watch the films and all the special features outside of just, I own them. So I'll actually jump into the first one, which I haven't actually taken out of its plastic yet. Uh, nicely shrink wrap. This is Breaking News, a Johnny Toe, or Johnny Two. I'd imagine it's Toe, because it's just T-O, but I don't know. Um, that's not meant to rhyme, I, I don't know if there's a certain pronunciation to his name. So what do we got? So this is your case. It's, I love these cases, so I'm very happy that uh, they've gone with this. I've been following Chameleon Films for a couple months now, and they've, they actually released it at the end of August. I didn't even realise. Uh, so I ended up just paying for the whole bundle, and it was shipped like... Well, I think I ordered it on the, the Wednesday before the Queen's birthday death day thing um they shipped on the friday because they shipped from the sydney warehouse and they were here on monday so again yesterday when i filmed so yeah nice artwork you got your rated m sticker which is small so it doesn't get in the way too much which i like but of course we'll get into it you get your back cover which does detail all of your special features um and your extra stuff it is region b coding so Apologies out there. On your spine, it does actually have the name plus the. Uh, I, th I believe this is uh, from Hong Kong, so yeah. Um, so it has it in Chinese, I guess. Uh, and your spine number. So you get number one, and that's the Chameleon Film logo, which I really like. It's a little swirl. It's uh, cool. You open this bad boy up, and first thing first. You do get disc artwork, which is really nice. And second thing second, which I think most people will appreciate, it comes with reversible artwork that doesn't include the rated sticker, which is fantastic. Uh, I only knew about that because I've already opened Summer Time Machine Blues just because I wanted to open one of them before I left yesterday because I saw Avatar on IMAX and it was great. And the sequel looks Great, I cannot wait for it to come out. I'd highly suggest that in IMAX, just in 3D in general, really. But yeah, so of course, it's basically the exact same on the back. There's no real difference outside of a lack of a barcode. And you get your booklet, which is cool. It's just an essay. So you get a synopsis of the film, and then you get a detailing of stuff, some kind of an essay or something. And a biographical essay on Johnny Toe. Cool. Uh, and critical appreciation. So, yeah. Blu-ray credits and all that. Very nice. Go visit Chameleon Films to get more films. I'm not sponsored or anything. I'm actually not sponsored. I don't. Uh, don't think they know I exist, despite me having just bought one of their films. Um, but I'm really, really keen to dive into these because it's really cool to find Australian boutique labels. Again, Imprint started, like, what, two years ago? and they've been going really strong. Uh, so I'm really excited for these because I really like Asian cinema, especially Hong Kong cinema, a lot of Jackie Chan stuff and Sammo Hung. Uh, so I'm open to whatever else there is and there's always other stuff. A lot of it's action stuff, but sometimes you get goofy sci-fis and whatever. So what's the next one? Aha, the goofy sci-fi. Uh, Summer Time Machine Blues. This is the one that I've already turned around so it doesn't have the PG label, but yeah. As you can see, it pins out quite nicely. Yeah, there's not too much to talk about. It's the same kind of deal where you get your booklet, which is nice and colorful. You get your disc artwork, and you get your reversible artwork, which is the exact same as the other artwork, just without the labels and stuff, which is really cool. I actually had already taken this out, and my dad already had it out there in the lounge room, so I'm like, I guess he wants to watch it soon. I believe this one's Japanese. It's from 2005, which... It is interesting that none of these say the actual years it was released outside of on the back. 
Uh, obviously, it does say, yeah, it is Jap Japanese, because it says 2005 Japan. I guess I'll leave that there and kind of try to read it. Uh, but, yeah. So, you get a good amount of stuff. I mean, already looking at the two of these, you get a 2004 Hong Kong film. It's 90 minutes, 107 minute long Japanese film. Uh, tells you the aspect ratio, 1080p color, which is... I guess if they ever do 4K, they can say 4K HDR or whatever. And color is spelled with a U, because that's how you spell it. Uh, this has Japanese DTS M, uh, Master Audio 5.1 and LPCM 2.0, as well as English subtitles. This has the exact same with the DTS Master Audio 5.1 and LPCM 2.0 in English subtitles, but it's in Cantonese. So what have they got in terms of limited edition features? There is a third one, but I'll show that one off next. You get limited collector's booklet featuring new essays by film writer Haley Scanlon and film historian Mike Walsh. New audio commentary by Hong Kong cinema expert Frank Chen. It's DJ, DJ -E -N -G. A propaganda jewel, a newly extended video essay on breaking news, because that's the film. Uh, newly translated and improved optional English subtitles. Melbourne International Film Festival 2004 Q&A with Johnny Toe. Newly unearthed interviews from 2004 Cannes uh, with Johnny Toe, Kelly Chen, and Nick Chung. Uh, behind the scenes, deleted scene in Mandarin only, and photo gallery and theatrical trailer. So that's a good amount of special features for one of them. Uh, the Japanese one is limited collector's booklets. They all have like limited collector's booklets. I We haven't seen any standard releases yet, given that these are the only three releases that currently had. So given how imprint was so popular to begin with, I'm kind of like, I want to buy these to get an idea, but it doesn't, I don't think it stipulates how limited in units they are. So, limited collector's booklet featuring new essay by film writer Haley Scanlon. I'd imagine these are going to be like Arrow Video, where they're probably actually going to do their own remasters and stuff, and you get a booklet uh, to some degree, maybe a sleeve, obviously these don't have sleeves, but I kind of prefer the casing over getting a sleeve, if I'm going to be honest with you. So that's a good benefit, but yeah. Arrow Video usually have like a booklet or something that's exclusive to the first printing or whatever, so make sure you get in there quickly. So yeah, this has a new essay by film uh, writer Haley Scanlon, audio commentary by director Katsu uh, Katsuyuki Motohiro, and writer Makoto Ueda, uh, with newly translated English subtitles. A new interview with writer Makoto Ueda, teaser and theatrical trailer. So... This one's a lot more limited in special features, but you get some commentaries, uh, which is actually just bloody nice, plus an interview, so. Uh, well, it says original audio commentary, but hey, at least it's a fucking commentary. And last but not least is Exiled, which is another Johnny Toe film. I thought these were all Johnny Toe films initially, because two of them are. Um, but I don't mind that it isn't, because I, it, it, I think it's a good exploration of like, hey, look, we're not just doing, you know... Hong Kong cinema, we're also doing Jap uh, Japanese cinema. So yeah, um, I'll obviously flip the artwork around again. But yeah, get some disc artwork. This seems, yeah, so you get your booklet. So it's just, it's just the standard stuff. It's the same in each kind of thing. This one has limited collector's booklet. It also has a different style. This one and Breaking News have the same style backing, whereas uh, Summertime Machine Blues doesn't, which I kind of like. I kind of dig that. Limited Collector's booklet featuring new essays by film historian Stephen Teo and, or Tay, Teo, I don't know, uh, and Dylan Chung. Two new audio commentaries by Hong Kong cinema expert Fa Frank Jing. Two new audio commentaries. Two commentaries by the one guy. Okay, interesting. The Weight of Honor, a new video essay on Exiled. New interview of co-composer David Klotz, newly translated and improved optional English subtitles, Exiled Dreams, The Cult Career of Josie Ho, The Making of Exiled, Behind the Scenes, Photo Gallery, and two Hong Kong trailers and one US trailer. So, um, and the artwork's pretty nice too. I, I like this shit. This is cool. I'm, I'm really keen. I don't know if yet if I'll put these in their own section. Um, I'm planning on getting... If I'm lucky, today, when this video comes out, I will have gotten a new shelf for my birthday from my parents. Which I might put these on, like, reserve these for that, which would be really interesting, because these are numbered. I know that I could do the same thing for imprint. I probably should, but I've got, like, the straight story, which is already in my David Lynch collection, so that's a bit 
And also, I don't have every single imprint title. Same with Criterion. It's just not going to happen. But these ones, I probably could, and I don't see why I shouldn't. I also went to JB <laughs> before seeing Avatar. Uh, I wanted to trade in a Switch game for another Switch game. I instead just bought the Switch game, which is uh, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, because I like 2D side-scrolling Mario games. It was $64. <laughs> I was If I had a traded in, the game I would have traded in for would have only given me $20 off the price tag, which didn't feel worthwhile given that I probably spent like $70 on that game because it's a Switch game. They're not really cheap. Uh, this was on sale. So I figure I'll just buy it straight off the bat, get it over and done with, you know. They had a $10 and $5 bin, so I bought Hot Rod, which I've heard is quite good. Uh, for those American comedies, but um, I don't mind the uh, Andy Samberg ones, you know, Andy Samberg? Yeah, uh, like Lonely Island ones, I believe it is. I don't know if this one's a Lonely Island film, I'll be honest, I have no fucking idea. But I've heard good things, and I've been wanting to watch it for a while, so 10 bucks sounds like a bloody steal. And despite the terrible artwork and the fact that it's not actually Criterion, I bought the Thin Red Line. Uh, yeah, look at how awful that artwork is. Like, those photoshops are so terrible. But for $5, sure, why not, you know? And it still comes with a bunch of special features. So I'm kind of like, yeah, I can I can dig that. I know it's not the best thing in the world, but um, it's one of those things where it's like, ah, oh, I could spend the $60 odd on a Criterion for it, or I could just spend 5 bucks and... Maybe I wouldn't even like it, I don't know. It's Terrence Malick, he's like... I don't know. I haven't seen a lot of his films. I have a few of his films. I've got Knight of Cups, I liked that one. I think that was in my experimental cinema phase, so I don't know if I'll like it anymore. Uh, but I'm still yet to watch Tree of Life, which is really, really dodgy of me to say, because I've had the Criterion for like three years. Yeah, no. I mean, come on. Sometimes it's like, hmm, am I in the mood for a three hour long experimental film that's like semi surrealist and abstract? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not always in the mood for that. <laughs> Sometimes, sure, but you know. Uh, and because I just took it out of the plastic and now I'm going to keep it, <sighs> I bought Lolita. They had it there on the shelf. I figured I'd buy it because it was like. I feel like this is one that'll probably sell out because Lolita's a very particular choice. I have the original uh, Kubrick one. I haven't seen either. I obviously know what the films are about, but like, look, it was either this or a movie called Whore. I don't know which one's a better choice, I'll be completely honest with you. Um, but yeah, you know, it's got some nice artwork, I guess. It's very, it's very white, you know, in its own way. A uh, bunch of special features. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's it's one of those things where it's like I showed uh, Guy because we met up to see Avatar and he, I showed him the free films. He's like, oh yeah, Hot Rod's good, you know, Thin Red Line, sure. And then I showed him the leader. He's like, oh, I wouldn't have paid 30 bucks for that. Actually, I wouldn't have paid any money for that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, well, knowing it's imprint, it's probably going to be rare, limited edition, and all that. Well, it already is limited edition, so it's like, yeah, I figured why not. I do have the other Lolita, don't I? I don't think I do. Oh, I do. Okay. I do. I, f I forgot that it's in Kubrick's collection, but yes, I got Lolita. I got both now. I'm pretty sure there's a third one. I don't know. Anyway, uh, that's it for now. Um, I guess we'll see what else comes in. I don't know. Either way, I guess this is my birthday video. So it's... Ending on Lolita is a bit weird of me. I probably should have done like Mario. <laughs> I don't know. I, I like I like Switch games. I don't care much for video games in general, but I like playing the Switch games uh, on the occasion. I played Donkey Kong the other day, just on the Switch by itself. I usually get it connected to the TV, but I don't like always playing video games on the big screen. I used to play Game Boy as a kid. Loved Game Boy. Game Boy Advance. Uh, so, yeah. And DSi. Handheld games I, I usually prefer. Anyway, that's it. See you next time, unless there's more, which I doubt. I mean, this has already been long enough, so... Yeah. Um, and I will be hopefully doing an Anatomy for Blu-ray on those three Chameleon titles. Uh, maybe just one of them, but definitely I'll endeavor... I, I will definitely still watch all three. Um, it's uh, going to be interesting for that one, because I want to do three Anatomy for Blu-rays. Uh, I... 
imagine maybe hopefully one of maybe November if they haven't come out by now. I don't know. We'll see. I guess no rush really. Bye.